All right, people, I recently made a complete care guide for the Tiger Moray Hill, and I realized I actually left out a very important part, which is tank mates. So let's talk about it. We're gonna do this video in a few different stages. First, we're gonna cover everything that they say online. Then I'm gonna talk about what has worked for me. And then we're gonna finish off with using some logic to figure out what else you could possibly put with a Tiger Moray Hill. Now, before we start, people, I should really mention this very important part, which is, every single eel is different for example in my personal tank as all of you know i have my moray eel in here and there are loads of other fish that it's completely you know living fine with their neighbors you feel me including corridoras you know one beam right here but i recently got a comment of someone who also owns a tiger moray eel they put some corridoras in and their corridors got eaten so yeah people it's very important to remember that every single eel is different and your results could vary i'm simply going to talk about what worked for me oh and also if you hear some squeaking then that my chair makes noise so apologies for that but yeah, anyway let's start off with what they actually say online and it is a little bit different a few different sources say different things but the main message there is you keep this moray eel in a species only tank which is probably the safest thing you could do if you do have a species only tank you could potentially Potentially put it with more moray eels they should get along fine but at the same time when they grow to adult size they could you know potentially have problems with each other so now even though many websites say that you should only keep them as a species only tank there are other sources that also say you could potentially have it with tank mates it's just more about making sure they're not small enough to be eaten and yeah considering that I bought a baby I thought I can do some experimenting and try it out in my community tank first and it's worked out fine so far so let's talk about the tank mates that i have that work and i do have to mention people there were definitely some tank mates that didn't work um we're gonna tackle that after now as i'm sure some of you can see um we've got angelfish angelfish work perfectly fine they pretty much leave each other alone angelfish are also way too big to be considered prey for now obviously do remember that this is my first tiger moray eel and when it does grow to a bigger size i will need to look at other options which i do have by the way um i do have a smaller tank where i can move some of the smaller fish in and i'm very close with my local fish store so i am pretty sure they'll be willing to take on my moray eel if i did have to return it you know if worse comes to worse but yeah always have backup plans people anyway back to the tank baits though people angelfish they work fine especially if you have a big enough tank they pretty much leave each other alone also corridoras people i've got loads of corridoras right here they are all swimming about right now and they are all completely fine i did lose one um i'm not sure if that was my eel or whether it just died because it didn't really have any bite marks or anything but i did lose one corridora ever since it reduced my tiger moray eel but as most of you are aware losing fish is normal so i can't really blame my eel for that another really good tank bait are rainbow fish now i should mention the babies probably not because they might get eaten but if you have adult rainbow fish or rainbow fish which are at least a little bit bigger they should be fine they are a bit too big to be eaten as food you know they grow to a decent size they're beautiful fish and yeah my tiger moray never goes anywhere near them another thing that works for me is congo tetras congo tetras are slightly bigger than normal tetras like your neons or your cardinals and yeah that added size i'm assuming protects them because same thing with them they just have not been attacked or been bothered by my eel at all um the next fish that worked for me are rosy bulbs i've got two in this tank i'm pretty sure they're a couple i named them ron and hermione yeah i know but yeah they are also completely fine they all leave each other alone um the only annoying thing sometimes that happens with the rosy bulbs is when i try to feed my eel you know i feed the earthworms and that the rosy bulb tries to eat those worms out of my hand they are very brave so usually when i do try to feed my eel i you know put a little bit of food in and then they get distracted and then i quickly put my hand in with the worm to feed my moray and the last of the general fish before we go into the more interesting ones is the siamese algae eaters i do have two in my tank here and they kind of just you know eat all the algae and that and once again the eel leaves them alone they leave the eel alone nothing ever happens now once again people this is for a baby tiger moray or at least a juvenile now she is getting slightly bigger but of course this could completely change once she grows to adult size by the way before we carry on please remember to like and subscribe i'm just trying to grow this channel people and it would really help me out but anyway let's talk about my oddball fish now or the more unique fish that are in this tank that are working completely fine with my tiger moray as well and the first one is my rope fish my rope fish nagini she is so humble like completely chill they share the caves all the time whenever i drop in foods they eat together like they don't attack each other at all and they are completely fine once again every animal is different your tiger moray 
could be a more aggressive one that doesn't want to share its hole but by my situation my tiger moray and my rope fish are getting along completely fine now another oddball that i have in this tank is my ghost knife fish and my ghost knife once again is also something that likes to go into caves and that and it is completely happy to share that with my moray eel now the important thing i should mention is i do have quite a few caves um my moray eel generally stays in one particular cave which is to one side and all the other fish they kind of go in and out of all of them so i guess my moray eel does see that one cave as her territory but like i mentioned all the other fish go in there as well and she doesn't touch them at all now my newest addition is my peacock eel which you might be able to see she's right there or he i don't know i i just automatically go for she yeah but yeah i did get that one recently so it's not confirmed yet but so far they've all been completely fine no one's attacked anyone now let's talk about the fish that did not work out um there are three examples and by looking at those examples we can kind of put together what else wouldn't really work the first being my soldier my puffer fish my pea puffer to be exact my pea puffer in this tank was doing so well he was alive for months man just eating all the pest snails and that one of my first videos on this channel was about this pea puffer and um yeah i can't lie he was he was there all these months ever since i put the moray eel in he kind of just vanished so kind of deep but it makes sense you know pea puffers are tiny and the other two fish that definitely didn't work out in this tank was my cherry bobs i had a pair and i had about four neon tetras no not sorry not neon cardinal tetras and yeah they all vanished within the first few days i didn't even have time to kind of you know catch them and put them in my smaller tank they were just gone and i guess the thing they all have in common or the cherry bobs and the tetras had in common is they genuinely sleep near the bottom and they are very small so they had two things going against them you feel me one being their size and the fact that they sleep on the bottom and my eel was nocturnal and that it's yeah it was just an easy snack for them now i'm sure you're wondering but hang on scoops you've got corridoras and they're kind of small as well yeah but corridoras do have a defense system they do have their spine which has a spike which allows them to protect themselves against predators so now people do keep in mind i do feel bad when those fish got eaten but at the same time i understand nature in nature a predator will eat another fish so if you are looking to get predator fish there is the chance that it might eat one of your fish and as long as you can understand that and accept that and realize that that is nature you should be fine in trying out you know putting a moray eel in a community tank but like i just mentioned it could go wrong for example if you have a big tank with just neon tetras and you know cherry uh, cherry i was about to say cherry berries uh cherry rust raw rotted what are they called cherry bobs that's it um <laughs> If you have a tag of just neon tetras and cherry barbs and you put a tiger moray in, it will most likely eat all of your fish. But if you have slightly bigger fish, which are a bit more, you know, boisterous than that, you should be fine. Now, using that logic of what we know of what works, you can kind of put together what, you know, would work and what wouldn't. So any small tetras, any other small fish like otter sinkers maybe as well, you know, things like that that stay near the bottom when they sleep and, you know, they're generally bite sized, they probably wouldn't work. The bigger fish or the ones that have a bit more boisterous side to them they would or should be fine they are fine in my tank but once again every eel is different people you could have a complete cycle that's just gonna eat everything and yeah now of course tank mates it's just one part of looking after a tiger more eel so if you want to see the complete guide that i made then click right here